Our next section in chapter three talks about the derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions. We're going to start out with the logarithmic functions. Um, first one is we'll start out with the our definition of a logarithm. Um, where if I have x equals e to the y, that means y is equal to the natural log of x. So if I wanted to find the derivative of the natural log of x, I could rewrite it as x equals e to the y and then do implicit differentiation on it. The derivative of x is just one. The derivative of e to the y, that is a chain rule problem, where my outside function is e to the x. Uh, the derivative of the outside function is just e to the x. My inside function is y. And the derivative of the inside function is dy dx. And if I'm finding the derivative, I'll be end up solving for dy dx. So um, I take the derivative of the outside function, except where there's an x, put parentheses. So I write e, put the y into the parentheses, multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, which is dy dx. I'm now going to divide both sides by e to the y. And I'm going to flip both sides around. So I get dy dx equals 1 over e to the y. But we know that e to the y is also equal to, yet to x. So that is equal to 1 over x. So the derivative of the natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that the derivative of the absolute value of x is equal to 1 over x. Um, remember, our natural logarithm function, x has to be greater than 0. Okay, if we take the graph of our natural logarithm function, this is what it looks like. It has to be greater than zero. By making the absolute value, that lets me put negative numbers in. I still can't put zero in. So the derivative of the natural log of x is um, 1 over x. And then I could use the chain rule, product rule, and other properties that I have already done in order to solve problems that have natural logs in them. So I'm going to do three quick examples here. The first one, I want the, I'm going to say that y equals the natural log of 4x. It's a chain rule problem. <laughs> Um, I want you to start getting used to doing the chain rule, talking it through and not writing everything down. I'll continue to write stuff down. I'm going to do it. I'll do it, talking it through. Then I'll write down the stuff that I used in the talk through afterwards. So I want to find dy dx or y prime. It's chain rule. I have an inside function and an outside function. My outside function is natural log of x. The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Okay, well, my x in this case is 4x. Times the derivative of the inside function, which is 4. And I get 1 over x. 
Okay. So again, my outside function was the natural log of x. The derivative of the outside function is 1 over x. My inside function was 4x. And the derivative of the inside function was 4. I did 1 over 4x times the derivative times 4. The second one, um, y equals x times the natural log of x. This is a product rule problem. So product rule, remember, is u v prime plus v u prime. The y prime equals the first function times the derivative of the second, which is 1 over x, plus the second function, natural log of x, times the derivative of the first, which is 1. That simplifies x over x is 1. 1 times the natural log of x is the natural log of x. And the third one is going to be C, which is the y equals natural log of x squared over x squared. So this is a quotient rule problem, where if I have y equals u over v, y prime is the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. Okay. I would like you to say the words every time that you write these things out. Um, you still have the cheat sheet in front of you, but you're going to have that benchmark test where you're going to have to you to do some basic ones without the cheat sheet. So I want you to get used to writing the little formulas down every time you do the problem. Okay. Let's figure out y prime. y prime is the denominator, x squared, times the derivative of the numerator. Okay. The derivative of the numerator, I have an outside function which is the natural log of x. Its derivative is 1 over x. Okay, I have an inside function, which is x squared, and the derivative of the inside function is 2x. So let's go back here. I'm trying to find the derivative of the numerator. So it's going to be 1 over x squared times the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x. Okay, um, I ran out of room because I wrote everything on the right, so let me rewrite this down at the bottom. Right now I have y prime equals x squared times 1 over x squared times 2x minus the top function, natural log of x squared, times the derivative of the numerator, which is 2x, all over x to the fourth. It's going to clean up a little bit. So the x squareds cancel. And I have an x in everything. So that x is going to go away. That x is going to go away. And I'm going to get rid of one of those. So my answer is going to be 2 minus 2 times something. So I can pull that 2 out, which is going to be 1 minus natural log of x squared over x cubed.
So that gets you um, basics on how to use the natural logarithm function. Remember, we still have to be able to use the product rule, the power rule, the product rule, the chain rule, um, quotient rule on those things. Okay. So that was actually an exponential function. Um, that we turned into a logarithm been able to solve. Now we're going to do something where I need to be able to take derivatives of something like y equals 4 to the x. I want to be able to take derivatives when I have um, variables in the exponent. And what we're going to do is a process called logarithmic differentiation. And logarithmic differentiation, I don't have logarithms in my problem to start, but I introduce them in order to solve the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log rhythm of both sides. And in my case, I'm going to take the natural log rhythm of both sides. So in this problem, I would get the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of 4 to the x. Using properties of logarithms, I can now bring that exponent out in front. I get natural log of y equals x times the natural log of 4. Remember, anytime you're taking the natural log of a number, that is just a number. So that's a constant. Um, so let me write out my steps here. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Then I'm going to use um, exponent property of logarithms. Sorry. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use implicit differentiation. So here, the natural log of y, its derivative is going to be 1 over y dy dx. Okay. Um, the derivative of x is 1 times the natural log of 4. So I'm going to end up with the natural log of 4. And I want dy dx by itself, so I'm going to multiply both sides times y. I get y, natural log of 4. But I know what y is. y is 4. 4 to the x, my answer would be 4 to the x, natural log of 4. So that's the process that I would go through and use. On your cheat sheet, you have a formula that says if y equals any b to the x, where b is a real number, that the derivative is equal to the original function times the natural log of that exponent. So that is the generic rule that you will be able to use. Okay. Where that's going to come into play is um, we spent at least a couple of weeks working with exponential functions in college algebra. For example, um, let's just do basic um, y equals 10 times 2 to the t over 5. This was something that started out with 10, and it doubled um, every one-fifth of my unit of time. 
Okay, so let's take the derivative of it. We're gonna, that needs to stay there, that times. I can't write it as 20 times that. So if I wanna figure out what y prime is, okay, what I have here is I have a constant times a function. So the derivative of a constant times a function is equal to the constant times the derivative of that function. So the derivative of this function is b to the x. So I'm going to be doing b to the x, so this would be b to the t. So it's going to be 2 to the t over 5 times the natural log of t over 5. Now, um, but I also have to take the derivative of the inside function, okay, which is going to be one fifth. So one fifth of 10 is two. So I'm gonna end up with two times two to the t over five natural log of t over five. Um, again, that two and the two don't multiply together. Um, I believe your book puts the natural log first so that you don't have a tendency to call that a four. So they would call this two natural log of t over five times two to the t over five. This is the way your book would do that. That's a very basic, simple one where we use logarithmic differentiation. Um, now I'm going to do some, uh, I'll do a little bit more, but I want to expand the basic um, problem to what happens if I have things that I'm doing, things that are not necessarily natural log, but logs to other bases, okay? So the other formulas you would need to use is if you have y equals log base b of x, the derivative is going to be 1 over x natural log of b. Um, that is if x's are greater than zero. But we're going to put absolute values here like we did before. And this is uh, for x's not equal to zero. So I could do the, that with um, others. So let's talk about other times that I would use um, logarithmic differentiation. So we use, um, I'm going to write it as this, logarithmic differentiation when exponent in the variable. Okay, that's the first case. I'm going to do one example of those. Or messy. Um, we'll call them rational functions. And I'll do an example of those. Let's do the first one. When x components in the variable. Okay. So I'm going to do y equals x to the x. It's another one where the exponent's in the variable. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Gives me the natural log of y is equal to the whole reason why we're doing this is to bring this x out in front. So I'm going to do that. So that's going to give me x natural log of x. I am now going to find the derivative. 
So this uh, derivative of natural log of y is 1 over y dy dx, or y prime. This is a product rule. Product rule is first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So it is the first function times the derivative of the second, which is 1 over x, plus the second function, ln of x, times the derivative of the first, which is 1. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. So I end up with y prime over y is equal to 1 plus the natural log of x. And I'm going to multiply both sides times y. I get y times 1 plus the natural log of x. But I know what y is equal to. At y is equal to x to the x, so my final answer is x to the x times the quantity 1 plus the natural log of x. So when you have the exponent in the variable, um, use logarithmic differentiation to solve it. Now, I also said for messy rational functions, or rational, I put in quotes, um, it's going to be a function over a function, and when we talk messy, I want to make sure I'm going to do one that was not on your homework. You have 60 and 78. Okay, so 78 doesn't look too bad, um, but what I'm going to do is I am going to do 65. 65 is I would call the prime definition of a messy function. 65 says f of x is equal to x plus 1 to the 3 halves times x minus 4 to the 5 halves over 5x plus 3 to the 2 thirds. Now, I could have assigned this problem prior to this lesson, but you would have had to use the product rule, the quotient rule, and the chain rule. What I am going to do now is I am going to use logarithmic differentiation by taking the natural log of both sides, and then... Um, I am going to use properties of logarithms and then take the derivative of both sides. Okay. I'm going to change the f of x to a y. Okay. And then I'm going to use properties of logarithms. So if I have a times b over c, I take the natural logarithm of that. Your properties of logarithms Okay, if you have a product, that means you add them. If you have a quotient, it means you subtract. So this would be equal to the natural log of A plus the natural log of B minus the natural log of C. So I'm going to do the same thing here. It is the natural log of A um, so I'm going to write x plus 1 the three halves plus the natural log of x minus four to the five halves minus the natural log of five x plus three to the two thirds. Now, I can use the power rule of exponents and bring these, of uh, logarithms, and bring these all out in front. So what I'll do, natural log of y is 3 halves, natural log of x plus 1, plus 5 halves, 
natural log of x minus 4 minus 2 thirds natural log of 5x plus 3. I am now going to take the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of natural log of y is going to be 1 over y times y prime. The deriv derivative of natural log of x plus 1 times 3 halves is going to be 3 halves. The derivative of natural log of x plus 1 is 1 over x plus 1 times the derivative of x plus 1. And I have 5 halves, 1 over x minus 4, times the derivative of x minus 4, which is 1, minus 2 thirds, 1 over 5x plus 3, times the derivative of 5x plus 3, is 5. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides times y and clean up the right-hand side at the same time. Uh, this is supposed to be y squared. That's supposed to be y prime. So, or in this case, f prime of x. It's going to be a y, but I know what y or f prime is equal to. It's equal to the original function x plus 1 to the 3 halves times x minus 4 to the 5 halves over 5x plus 3 to the 2 thirds. Okay, for this I get 3 halves. Okay, this is a bracket problem now. This is 3 over 2 x plus 1 plus 5 over 2 x minus 4 plus 10 over uh, minus 10 over 3 5 x plus 5 and I would leave it like that Now, again, you could have done this using the power rule, the chain rule, and the quotient rule, but it would have taken you significantly longer to do those problems. I'm looking at your homework. Your homework is 16, 28, 42, 60, and 78. So 16, I've done one like that. 28, um, Twenty-eight. I want you to be careful. Do not use the quotient rule to do 28. I would use properties of logarithms to do. Let me see. That's derivatives of b to the x. Yep. Um, so let's look at 28. Twenty eight you have P is equal to forty over one plus two to the negative T. Um, I don't like the way that's written. Um, the way I would have done this, the way I would do this problem is I would multiply both sides times 1 plus 2 minus t. And then I would take the derivative of both sides. 
where this is going to be a product rule. First function times derivative of the second plus the second function times derivative of the first. Um, so I'm actually doing one of your homework problems. So this would be first function times the derivative of the second. Second is a sum rule. Derivative of one is zero. The derivative of two to the negative t. This is b to the, that's the b to the x type problem. And go back to the notes there. Y equals b to the x. Y prime is b to the x natural log of x. Okay. Well, let's look at this. If um, we have two, y equals 2 to the negative t, uh, which I don't like it there because we would say that y prime is equal to b to the x, which was 2 to the negative t, um, times the natural log of the x, which is negative t. Um, I don't like that natural log of a negative something because it looks bad to me, even though it's perfectly valid. I could rewrite this as 1 half to the t. Put parentheses and then put the t. Okay, Negative exponent means flip it over, change the exponent to positive. So if I want to take the derivative of 1 half to the t, it's going to be 1 half to the t, which we're going to keep as to the negative t, times the natural log of t. Notice how that absolute value thingy worked there. So that's why that absolute value thing is there. And this is just 0. Well, my final answer is going to be, well, this is first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function. And the second function in this case is 1 plus 2 to the negative t times the derivative of the first is equal to 0. So let me move this over here. Um, this is going to be. 2 to the negative t, natural log of t, it's p, times this. I'm solving for p prime, so I'm going to move this to the other side and then divide by what's in front. So p prime is equal to subtract, so it's going to be the opposite of p. p is this. Okay, so there's my p times 2 to the negative t, p. Natural log of t divided by this thing that's out in front. Um, there is some simplification that can happen. Um, I can get rid of the complex fraction. So on this part, I'd have a squared there, and then this one would just have one of those there. But I, I'm going to stop right there. On a quiz or a test, it's going to say, hey, differentiate, but do not simplify. So that's the way I would do your problem number 28. 42. 42 straight forward, 60, 60, you're doing a log of a log. I'm going to do one like 60.
your function says y. Um, I'm going to say y equals, I'm going to do log base 5 of log base 5 of 4x plus 3. That makes it similar to what you have. Not exactly like what you have, but very similar to what you have. So this is going to be a chain rule problem, okay? And I'm going to write out all the individual work because this one's going to be a chain rule with a chain rule. So y prime. So originally, I have an outside function of log base 5 of x. The derivative of that is going to be... Um, 1 over x natural log of let me verify let's find my notes here that's yeah, 1 over x natural log of 2 I lock for this case 5 1 over x natural log of 5 the inside function is log base 5 of 4x plus 3. The derivative of the inside function is a chain rule, where the outside function is log base 5 of x. The uh, derivative of the outside function is 1 over x natural log of 5. The inside function is 4x plus 3. The derivative of the inside function is 4. So to come up with that derivative of that inside function, it's the derivative of the outside function, except for there's an x, put parentheses inside the parentheses, put the inside function. So I'm going to get, and then times the derivative of the inside function. So derivative of the inside function is 4 over 4x plus 3, natural log of 5. Okay. So now I have all the pieces, parts that I need to write my y prime. And that's what I'm going to do right over here y prime. It's the outside function, except where there's an x put parentheses. It is log base 5 of my x, which is my inside function, of the log base 5 of 4x plus 3. Uh -huh. The derivative of the outside function which is going to be 1 over the x, which is my inside function. There we go. Log base 5 of 4x plus 3. This derivative of outside function times the derivative of the inside function, which is times 4 over natural log of 5 of 4x plus 3. Okay. That's your final answer. That's the way you would do it. This is a constant. This is a function. That natural log of 5 would distribute to both things on the right-hand side. This natural log of 5 does not distribute. So don't, don't, try to make it distribute and end up with like a 4x plus 3 squared. That should be enough to get you through the next lesson.